presents Go Now, a play by Lyndon House. The night I first met Diana. The wine bar was full. Well, it was a Friday night. She smiled at me. That was the start. A warm, friendly smile. By the end of that evening, I'd felt as if I'd known her all my life. She had a sunny, friendly spirit and an almost childlike capacity for happiness, and I fell hopelessly in love. Within weeks, we were considered an item, and within months, I had moved in with her. She lived in a house on the towpath of a canal that would have caught the eye of John Constable. I was as happy as anyone had a right to be. Then, one day, whilst we were strolling along the towpath, I just can't get over how beautiful it is here and how beautiful you are. Oh, flatterer. (laughs) I was thinking, well, you settled in now and I thought it was time we entertained. What? Like a double act or or a magician and his glamorous (laughs) assistant? (laughs) But we don't have a white rabbit. And my best trick was finding you. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) well... Don't be silly. You know what I mean. I'd like you to meet my friends and... Well, it'd be a good way to get some advertising in for the business. What? The flyer's not enough? Well, every little helps. Plus, I want to show you off to them. Uh, Well, good idea. A dinner party it is. A dinner party. It seemed like a good idea. An innocent dinner party. But that was the night when everything changed. So, remind me again, just who is coming to this grand welcoming dinner party tonight? Well, well, you've met Sarah, obviously. Your dear twin sister, obviously. Then there are my two fellow teachers, Karen and Belinda, and their respective husbands, Jeff and Graham. So what are they like? Karen and Belinda are my two best friends, so they're obviously good judges of character. <laughs> Jeff is an accountant and really quiet, you know, the sort of bloke who sits in the corner and listens. And, mm. But Graham's the complete opposite. <laughs> Loud? Oh, seismic. <laughs> when he's had a few, he registers on the Richter scale. <laughs> he's a policeman. He used to play rugby, though. Almost got to play for Wales. Yeah. It's more than likely he'll mention it, so try to act surprised. Now, they'll be here any minute, so I- I'd better go and check if everything's ready. Oh, not yet. Oh, mm. hey. <laughs> <laughs> I think I should have a kiss first. Oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, have we got time for... Uh, No, we haven't. Down boy. (laughs) You hear that? Down boy. (laughs) Oh, Karen's so good in the kitchen. She makes Nigella Lawson look like a kitchen slut. So I just want everything to be perfect tonight. Just as you are perfect. (laughs) You're saying all the right things. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, sod it. A bit early. Right, you answer the door, get them settled, and get them all a drink. Hello. 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 Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, well gosh. Uh, it's really nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm yeah. 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 Well, come through. Diana's in the kitchen. She'll be here in a minute. Oh, I hope she hasn't gotten into any trouble. Oh, only lots. But don't tell her I said so. (laughs) Well, as she's indisposed, I suppose I'd better make the introductions. Mm. Jeff, Karen, Ah, Graham, Belinda, this is Dave. Oh, hi, Dave. Oh, hi. 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 Nice to meet you, yeah. So, Dave, how are you settling in? You're from Glasgow, aren't you? Must find this town a bit quieter. Oh, no, I love it. I've always loved the countryside. Landscape gardener, aren't you? Yes, just set up the business. 
all set to go. Ah, well, we were thinking of having a pond in the garden. You know, now that Polly's old enough, don't we, Karen? I mean, she wants to fill it with koi car, but I'd much rather have a wildlife pond. You know, do our bit for the environment. I don't want an invasion of frogs hopping about all over the place, thank you very much. Oh, you'd hardly notice them, apart from the breeding season. More people are turning to making their ponds suitable for wildlife. With the destruction of natural habitat, there's no doubt they're needed. And they can be just as attractive. Just imagine, you you could sit by it on the summer evenings and watch the dragonflies darting around. Oh, we'd get dragonflies? Oh, yes. You'd be surprised how quickly nature would stock it for you, Mm. particularly if you live close to the canal. Oh, and then we'd have those slimy frogs hopping around all over the place. No, thank you. If we're having one, it's going to be goldfish. Uh, Well, I'll have a think. I have a card somewhere. Uh, uh, Ah, here we are. You could be my first clients. How long is it now, Belinda? What? Oh, still five months yet. It's just starting to make a bloody nuisance of itself. I wish we could do it like frogs. Just lay some eggs and bugger off to let them fend for themselves. (laughs) Is this your first? If only. This is the fourth. The fourth in seven years. That's right. Hit the net every time. My sperm swims with the sharks. Graham, please. Well, these sharks are having all their teeth removed. You, my dear husband, are having the snip. The snip? (laughs) The snip. Snip, snip, snip. You're having the red wire cut. Uh, I I, I can't have that. It's either that or celibacy. This will be the last. I can't have my ghoulies taken away like that. I could never show my face in the rugby club again. The boys will all laugh at me. When Sammy Stone had it done... We all called him Sammy Seedless. <laughs> Old Graham <laughs> Flop and Chop. You see? <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Graham, grow up. The boys in the rugby club won't even know unless you tell them. It's not as though you'll start talking in a voice two octaves higher and start watching the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Evening all. Oh, what's the matter with Graham? Oh, don't worry about him. He's in mourning for the impending loss of his crown jewels. <laughs> Pardon? Uh, he's having his undercarriage smoothed off. You know. Little Tinky Winky. Oh, you mean flop and chop. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, dinner is served. I hope we're not having meat and two veg, Diana. <laughs> or prawn balls. <laughs> All right, have your fun, but my day will come. (laughs) Follow me. And don't you go having too much wine. Uh, You know me, love. (laughs) Yes, I do. And that's why I'm telling you. The meal was as perfect as Diana had hoped it would be. Graham kept us all entertained with his numerous stories of his police and rugby playing days. He talked about how a serious knee injury stopped him playing for Wales, and I pretended to be surprised. By the time we were drinking coffee, her friends were my friends. Well, that was a wonderful meal, Diana. Hear, hear. Oh, thank you. Hey, I don't think you've seen the house since we redecorated. Dave's been really busy. Landscape gardener and painter and decorator, eh? Any more strings to your bow, Dave? (laughs) Oh, well, my bow is quite small, really. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, don't forget Carpenter. He built the fitted wardrobes as well. Right, who wants to have a look at my darling's handiwork? Oh, me. Me and him. (laughs) And me. Right, then I'll take you on a guided tour. I've already seen it, so I'll stay and keep Dave company. Follow me. We'll start the tour upstairs. So, what do you think of them all? Oh, they're really nice. Graham can be a bit... uh, (laughs) (laughs) Graham can be a lot. uh, (laughs) But he's a good bloke. And Belinda's a strong personality. She's the perfect match for him. And they were all brilliant with Diana after that faithless piece of excrement Russ Davis left her. Oh, yes. uh, Diana told me about him. My predecessor, so to speak. To look at him, you'd think butter wouldn't melt with his blue eyes and his blonde curly hair. But I had him pegged straight away. He was just too charming, 
too sure of himself. And he was always smiling. Dad used to tell us, never trust a man who's always smiling. They've something to hide. But you know Diana. She gave him all the love she had to give. And he just threw it back in her face. You ought to have read the note he left. He just didn't love her enough. Loved himself too much more like. Is is that why you were so hostile towards me at the beginning? I uh, don't know what you mean. Oh, come off it, Sarah. You couldn't have made it any clearer that you didn't want me anywhere near Diana. It was as if you were trying to drive me away. I was made to feel very unwelcome. Well, perhaps. But you've grown on me. I think it'll be a lot different this time. Diana's so happy in a way she never was with Davis. You do love her, don't you? Oh, yes. Cross my heart and hope to die. Hope to die? Let's hope not. (laughs) You're really protective of her, aren't you? We were only 13 when Mum died, and I was always the more mature. Dad was so paralysed with grief, he simply didn't function for a few years. So I was sort of like a mother hen to her chick. Oh, oh, wonderful Well done, Dave. It seems like you're a dab hand with a paintbrush. And I love the wardrobes. I think you managed to knock a nail in straight once, didn't you, Graham? <laughs> <laughs> That's what tradesmen are for. I'm known more for my intelligence and intuition. I'm a policeman, don't forget. Oh, for God's sake. You're a custody sergeant, not Inspector Morse. Drink, everyone? I thought oh. you'd never ask. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Right, uh, what should we all do now? Oh, I think we've got a couple of board games. I could have a look. How about charades? Oh, no, thank you. I still haven't got over the Graham's depiction of Up the Junction. Well, we could set up the Wii. We've got that new tennis game. I know. Let's have a seance. Sorry, what? A seance. Let's see if we can contact the undead. <laughs> you mean socialists? Um, no, <laughs> I'm not so sure. We shouldn't be meddling with things that we don't understand. Oh, come on, it'll be a bit of fun. We had one in the rugby club one night. What happened? We called up Adolf Hitler. <coughs> Hitler? Yes. What did he say? Did he share his invasion plans with you? No, he just told us he reckoned he was a better painter than Churchill. <laughs> 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 oh, you daft sod. <laughs> what do you think, love? Yes, what harm can it do? Yeah. Good girl. Right, we need a way of making the letters. Oh, would playing cards do the trick? Perfect. We can write the letters on the back. Ruin a perfectly good set of cards. Oh, it'll put pay to our strip poker. (laughs) Oh, no more wine for you, dear girl. He's not (sighs) denying it. And he's blessing. (laughs) I'll uh, uh, get the cards. Right, come on. Let's get the table set up. Uh, Belinda, get those chairs. Jeff, help me get the tables into the centre. Got the cards. I'll write the letters. Are we sure about this? Don't worry, Karen. Just on my right, Jeff. There you go. Oh, down here. Right, put the chairs around. Oh, uh, there's only room for six. Oh, it's all right. I'll sit and watch. Well, are you sure? Yes. I'll be able to see if there's any cheating. As if I would. Right, get the cards out and let's get sitting down. I watched as they all took their places around the table. There was a knowing twinkle in Graham's eye, and I wondered what entertainment he had in mind for everyone. Little did I know. All sitting comfortably? Right, first of all, let's all hold hands. Look, look, I'm not convinced that this is a good idea. Oh, beware the Ides of Mars, eh? It's March, Graham. What? It's beware of the Ides of March. My husband, the intellectual. (laughs) (laughs) Right, we're all holding hands. Good. 
Spirit guide, hear my voice. We wish to enter the spirit world. <laughs> Will you grant us admittance? Please do, oh spirit guide, or my husband will be right knobbed off. <laughs> Ignore the non-believer. She will receive her comeuppance when I get her home later. Right. All place one finger on the glass. Um, which one? Well, that one there. Oh no, I mean which finger? <laughs> Will you take this seriously? I'm trying to build the atmosphere. Well, so well, hurry up then. I'm still not convinced that this is wise. Oh, don't be such an old woman, Jeff. Right, all fingers on. Ready? Is there anybody there? <laughs> well, that's original. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a daft question anyway. I mean, if there's nobody there, then there's nobody to say no, is there? It's like asking if someone's asleep, and the answer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Blooming heck, will you lot shut up? Is there anybody there? Oh, look! Uh, N? Oh, Belinda, is that you? <laughs> Why? Yes. <laughs> Is there anybody there? I bet it spells yes. Why? E. S. <laughs> Told you. Is it Adolf Hitler again? <laughs> Ask him if it's true. He only had one testicle. <laughs> Quiet. Do you have a message for us? Look, look, it's, it's off again. G O N O W. Go now. What does that mean? Where shall we go? Uh, G O G. O G O. <gasps> what was that? Oh, don't you start, Dave. <sighs> What's the matter, love? Uh, I thought I heard something. Heard what? I, I, I don't know. I, just something. Dave, please, you're starting to scare me. Uh, okay, Graham, I think that's enough. Graham, stop it. I can't, I, I can't get my finger off. It's spelling go over and over. Graham, stop it. I can't. Graham, it's not funny. Graham! You stupid, stupid sod. I swear to God, love, I couldn't stop it. How bloody stop you? I told you not to drink too much. Not funny, Graham. Not funny. What's the matter, Dave? Uh, are you sure no one heard anything? Only this idiot. Come on, I think it's time we went home. I can give you the silent treatment better in our own house. Sorry, you two. Dave, you look as white as a sheet. Like you've seen a ghost. Oh, shut up, you. Uh, no, it's nothing. Uh, it's amazing how your imagination can carry you away sometimes. I just thought... Uh, no, 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 it, it was nothing. Well, I think uh, we'll make tracks as well. Thanks for a great evening. Really enjoyed it. Yes, thanks, you two. Don't forget the recipe for that moose, Diana. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. Bye. See you again. Bye. 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 Well, that was a fun evening. I wouldn't want to be in Graham's shoes when Belinda gets him home. Oh, you're sure it was all down to him then? Oh, God, yes. It's typical mm. of his sort of practical joke. Mm. Right, I'm going to leave the clearing up until tomorrow. You coming up? I'll be there in a minute. Don't be long. Everyone thought it was Graham. It must have been. After all, it had been his idea. But that voice, I heard it, no one else. And the message, what did it mean? And was it just for me? But then again, perhaps it was my imagination, just my imagination. Right then, I'm off to the gym. Do you want me to bring anything back? Oh, uh, how about a takeaway? Oh, Indian or Chinese? Oh, there's that new Thai place just opened. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Burger. 
Oh, you do like to live life on the culinary edge, don't you? Oh, plain and simple, just like me. <laughs> right, I'm off. See you later. Oh, getting yourself all breathless and sweaty? Can I Ooh. come and watch? Don't get all pervy. Doesn't suit you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, turn the lamp on when you go out. I'm going to have a read. Okay, bye. Right then, let's see. James Patterson, I think. A few brutal murders. Just the thing to lighten an evening's reading. Oh, oh no, the bulb's gone. Now where's the torch? I know it's in here somewhere. Huh. What the hell was that? Uh, hello? Oh my god! It's coming from everywhere! Who's there? Please! Please! The sudden silence was like a black cloud suffocating me, so I couldn't breathe. Then I felt something that chilled my blood to ice. The room had suddenly turned cold. An icy, clammy cold, which enveloped everything, wrapping me in its icy cocoon. I shivered, and my breath dissolved into mist. There was something in the room with me. God, there was something there. In the darkness. Go. No, please! What do you want with me? There it was, a figure, framed against the wall, not human, a mist. It advanced towards me. I couldn't move. I felt helpless, like an insect trapped in a spider's web, watching as the monster advanced towards me, before engulfing me in its deadly embrace. Closer and closer. Then... A cold hand touching my face, fingers on my cheek. I closed my eyes as if to blot out the horror. No! Please! Dave, I forgot my... What the hell's the matter? What are you doing? What? I... Standing in the middle of the room in the dark? I... Uh, I... What's wrong? The bulb went. I, I, I was... Well, it's working all right now. Must have been a bit loose. Why, look at you. Sweat's pouring off you. Oh, I feel a bit faint. I need to sit down. I, uh... Shall I call a doctor? You look terrible. No, 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 it's all right. What are you doing back? Oh, I forgot my member's pass. Look, are you sure you're all right? Uh, uh, I think I must be coming down with a, a bug or something. Oh, come on, love. Let's get you up to bed. Yes, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not wearing the uniform. Come on, my brave little soldier. Will you stay home tonight? Of course. Oh, Diana, I love you. Oh, I love you too. Now up to bed. I undressed before slipping between the comforting sheets. My mind was a maelstrom of dark thoughts. Was it the seance that had released the spirit? What meaning did those two words have? Was it an instruction? A warning? Were the words just for me? Was there some terrible secret from the house's past which had been unleashed? Would Diana also be drawn into the nightmare at some time in the future? I vowed to myself that I would protect her. But from what? What did it want? So many questions. So few answers. Bloody hell! <sighs> <sighs> Pull yourself together, Dave. It's just someone at the front door. Oh, hello, Belinda. 
Hi, Dave. You look terrible. Oh, no good trying to get round me. I'm still going to ask you in. Oh, thanks. Diana's out at the moment. Oh, it's all right. You can pass the message on. Go on through. Right then. Tea or coffee? Tea, please. Milk, no sugar. Mm, I have a couple of things I wanted to tell you. First, it's Graham's 40th birthday a week Saturday, and we're having a party for him in the community hall on the square. Hopefully you and Diana can come. Well, I would have thought so. So, the big four all way. Eh? Yeah, he's 40 going on 14. <laughs> and don't worry, <laughs> there'll be no attempts to contact the undead. Well, glad to hear it. Which brings me on to my second point. Mm. I'd like to apologise for his behaviour on Saturday. Uh, he's always mm. the same when he's had too much to drink. Thinks he's <laughs> God's gift to comedy. Only that wasn't very funny. Oh, it's all right. No, it isn't. He upset some of us. I know Karen was a bit shaken, and I could see you were a bit thrown by it as well. Do you know, he's still denying it was him. He's probably just embarrassed about it. He realises he went too far. Yes, well, anyway, the idiot's sorry, and so am I. Think nothing of it. He said he was planning to act out about the old house and the big fire. What old house and fire? Don't you know the story? Hasn't Diana told you? No, she hasn't. Well, it was about a hundred years ago. This house wasn't here then, but another larger house stood on this same spot. I mean, it was only a village then, before all the developments. Oh, just a minute. Uh, The kettle's boiled. Right, go on. Well, like I say, a bigger house on this spot. Now, a magistrate lived there. He was in his 60s and he'd been a widower for a number of years. Well, his only son had been killed in the war. Oh, thank you. Oh, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> Coaster? Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there you go. After. Anyway, after the war, this magistrate actually married his son's fiance. Straight out of EastEnders, that one. It certainly set the villagers' tongues wagging. Well, obviously, she was a lot younger than him. And some said she was only going to marry his son to get her hands on his money. So after a few months of marriage, they took on a sort of gardener and handyman to help around the house. A bit like me. What? Gardener and handyman. Oh, yeah. So... Well, you can guess what happened next. Oh, I think so. All very D.H. Lawrence. It was obvious to everyone what was going on, except the magistrate, of course. Or perhaps he didn't care. Anyway, not long after, the magistrate disappeared. No one had seen him for days. His wife said that he'd gone to Scotland to take care of his invalid sister, and he'd been gone for some time. Oh, this tea's lovely. (laughs) Well, not long after, the gardener moved in with her to keep her company and help around the house, she said. But some started to suspect foul play. So, I hope you're taking all this in, Dave. I'm going to test you on it after. Hanging on every word. (laughs) Anyway, one night, a few weeks later, there was a massive fire at the house. Some locals arrived to help, and they could hear the couple screaming for help inside. But some rescuers said they saw a figure in the doorway, blocking their escape. And even as the flames engulfed this figure, it stood there, and it had its hand held out in front of it, as though stopping them from getting out. The following morning, they searched through the burnt-out rubble and found the charred bodies of the lovers. And in the cellar, they found the decomposing body of the magistrate. His skull had been smashed in, and he had his hand outstretched in front of him. The fire had been his revenge from beyond the grave. It had been his ghost in the doorway stopping his murderers from escaping. Well, what do you think? Spooky, eh? Dave? (laughs) Oh, 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 yes, that's certainly a, a hell of a story. 
well, is bound to have been embellished over the years. I'm sure it was just a straightforward murder and a house fire. No ghosts standing in fiery doorways. Yes, you're probably right. Uh, You mentioned a cellar. Yeah, but I expect it was blocked up when they built this house. So anyway, Graham said he was going to say he'd contacted the magistrate. Had it all planned, the book. Don't know where Go Now came from, though. Oh, I expect he'll confess eventually. Oh, God, is that the time? I only meant to call for five minutes. I'd better rush. Thanks for the tea. Oh, thanks for the story. (laughs) See ya. Bye. Was that the answer? Had Graham's innocent party piece awakened the long-dead spirit? Was it the magistrate calling to me from a century ago? Why go now? Perhaps they had been his final instruction to the lovers before he was brutally cut down. I was afraid no longer. Now I had a mystery to solve. Hello? Speak to me! Are you the magistrate? What do you want from me? If I can help, I will. Speak to me. Where's it coming from? It it sounds like the utility room. Here, it's... My God, it is from here. It's... It's coming from under the floorboards. Is that where the cellar was? Under this room? Where are you? I knelt and listened. The infernal banging was directly beneath me. Was the cellar still there? I glanced to my side. There in the corner, by the skirting board, it looked like... A lever, a little wooden lever. I crawled across and pressed it down. A trapdoor lifted, just an inch, but enough for me to lift it slowly. Beneath, a set of stone steps downwards into a thick, choking darkness. Christ, the cellar's still here! I need a torch. Here we are. Right. Once more into the breach. Come on, Dave. It's just a ghost. It can't hurt you. Besides, he's been dead a hundred years. Oh, oh dear. I started down the steps into the blackness. I've only just got here. Bloody hell, it's cold. It is like ice. I can barely see, even with the torch. Oh no! I wish I hadn't started this. Are you the magistrate? Please! What do you want from me? Please! Oh, what's that? Over there! By the wall! It's a, a pile of rags! I, I wonder what... No, it isn't! It's a... A body! Propped up against the wall! God almighty! A body! The, the face! The, the skull! I, I... No! Who are you? Who are you? No! No! Keep away! Please! Please, no! Help me! No! Oh, bloody hell, bloody, bloody hell. 
I... It's gone. Oh, thank God. That face. That stare. Staring at me. Who was it? What's that? Diana? Oh, hello, love. I... Uh, I found the, the old cellar. What's the matter? Don't be afraid. Did you hear that banging? It, it, it's all right. Let's let's go next door. I, I'll explain everything. What's wrong? You look like you're in a trance. You, you, you're going to leave me. What? You, you can't go. Stay. I love you. Well, well, of course I'm not going to leave you. Don't be silly. What's all this about? What? What's, what's, what's the knife for? You, you can't leave me. We'll be together forever. I'll make you stay. It, it won't hurt, I promise. No, Diana. Please. What, what are you... No, 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 no. Keep away. Put the knife down. Please. You can't leave. I I'll make you stay. I love you. No, Diana. No! Ah! 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 We'll be together forever. Diana, I was wondering if... Oh, no. Oh, no, not again. He, he was going to leave me, but, but I made him stay. We love each other. We'll be together forever. All right, <laughs> give me the knife. Right, now go upstairs, get undressed, and have a nice shower. I'll tidy up down here. I love Dave. We'll never be parted. I know. Together forever. Now go on. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. I did try to warn you off, but I really thought it was going to be different this time. Oh, I can't have it put away, you see. I just can't. She means everything to me. I have to protect her. Come on. Let's get you down into the cellar. At least you won't be lonely. You'll have Russ Davis to keep you company. By the next day, Diana had lost all memory of what had happened. Sarah had told her that I'd left, and she grieved for her lost love. Soon, everyone would be rallying round to comfort her. Poor Diana. How could these men do it to her? She gave her love so freely and they tore it up and threw it back at her. Only one person knew the whole truth. Sarah. What else could she do for her poor bedeviled sister? Like she said, she'd do anything for Diana. And so, life goes on. Only now there are two of us. Two restless spirits waiting, patiently waiting to warn the next man who fell under the hypnotic spell of Diana. Good boy!
morning, Dr. Brantley. Oh dear God help me. Dr. Bradley!